Hi, Chris Newman here. Let's have a discussion on social and demographic change from 1840 until 2024 and onward. Much has happened since 1840 in the world, but on these little islands of New Zealand, what has been particularly noteworthy has been nearly 200 years of intermarriage, which has led to us becoming one people, the New Zealanders. Here's the language of the T Treaty of Waitangi. It says the chiefs and tribes who were 100% Māori were Nā Rangatira ki Nā Hapuki, which means the chiefs and tribes. And then there was also another group and all the people of New Zealand, which is Nā Tangata Katoa o Nūtirāni. These words in Māori are in the Treaty of 1840. And it clearly defines these two groups who were there. Now, what's happened over the period, I'm going to show you a simple demographic chart. Uh, in 1840, there was about 100,000 uh, Maori folk of all types, chiefs, slaves, various uh, tribes distributed all across the land. These were the survivors of the musket wars. The 100,000, the red line, follows them, and by... About 1880, the population of immigrant settlers and so on had started to overtake and eclipse the original 100% Maori folk. And the blue line represents people who are of mixed so-called Maori and Pākehā, whatever, lineage. So there's an increasing proportion of them as well. Now, I don't have exact figures. I'm just giving you a general trend and a general idea. So the old time Maori, most of them were gone 1930, 1940, pretty much everything faded from the old days. And, but what had happened is the population changed from the chiefs and tribes to the people of New Zealand and we all became the people of New Zealand. Or in, a, in another way to show this is all of this moved forward into a new world. And this is the old world, and now in New Zealand we have a mix of all kinds of people, but we have fractional Maori who are those who can claim to be descended from this original group. Now, there is, I'm going to make some distinctions here as we get into this. The becoming one people, the, the, the New Zealand culture was one of unity, of localism, of self rule of representation, meaning we had people who would represent us to our government and so on, and we had this culture of a fair go, everyone was allowed a fair go, and it's a personal matter, whichever culture you had, and we were pro-Christian, for example, there was a great prophet, T.W. Ratana, who, who was public mission went from about 1920 to 1940, and he represented a, a great strong bridge across in this period here where there was a lot of change going on from the old ways to the new and we were very friendly. Now in this modern times we've got this grumpy group come up who out of the fractional Maori because over here we're all New Zealanders whatever background but there's this group who want to call themselves mana whenua or tangata whenua which means the people of the land or we are the ones who you know we are the real people of the land. However they are all mixed blood, and so they're like the rest of us. But what's, what unfortunately we've got is this idea of separatism, which is with this particular group, who are atypical or untypical of most regular folk of Maori descent. And I'm making this abundant, the point abundantly clear. However, this group is quite characteristic because they all have mixed bloodlines but they minimise or deny that fact, and they'll say, oh, I'm from this tribe, or I'm from that tribe, but they forget all their other ancestors, and they're not honouring their father and their mother. They're, they're, they're choosing selectively what to say, and based on that, they get privileges and claim political advantage. Um, they also pretend that they're indigenous, and they talk about a place called Aotearoa, but if you see Captain Cook's original 1770 map, of New Zealand, there is no Aotearoa anywhere. And that was the roots of talking about New Zealand and defining this land. And he defined it beautifully with his charts. So 
They pretend they're indigenous uh, even though they're not. They're just like the rest of us, they're the people of New Zealand. That word them is a meaningless word. So you could, everyone's indigenous, nobody's indigenous, it doesn't tell us anything. Now they also claim that there's a Crown Maori partnership in the treaty. However, the language here is nga rangatira ki nga hapuki, nga tangata katoa o nutirani. So that's the, the chiefs and tribes and all the people of New Zealand are Queen Victoria. There's no treaty partnership, nothing there. Okay, they also have an um, interesting attachment or affiliation with the Maori versus Pākehā cultural Marxist conflict ideology. A conflict ideology is that which tries to set people into opposing groups. And this is one characteristic of this unfortunate lot. They make this holy story about anti-colonialism as if it was the worst thing that ever happened, except they're living here, way, not in 1880, not in 1840, they're way along here, along the line in another world of 2024, and they're going boo-hoo-hoo about colonialism when there was the musket wars and all kinds of things happened in the past. Why are they talking about one little thing that they weren't participating in and they don't even know how to talk about its history uh, because it fits the anti-colonialist, holy story, cultural Marxist conflict ideology? That is why. And of course, to do that, you've got to make up lots of lies. Uh, now, the te reo, they want to impose the, te reo means the sort of Maori language, they want to impose that on others and make it a, like, almost like a, um, a, a new born-again uh, idea of some sort of cultural religion. Very interesting, especially in the media, how this gets done. Um, there's anti-white racism and hatred. Very interesting to see that manifest. Um, Anti-Christian attitude, very evident anti-Christian, very um, hateful and uncharitable, unkind and uh, very um, arrogant and bigoted attitude. Uh, and there are certain people who really exemplify that. I won't say any names, but they are all a <laughs> mixed bloodline. Um, Neo Tikanga, they've been reinvented this idea of this, oh, tribal law is wonderful and we're all free. Forgetting that Neo that Tikanga originally led to the bloody wars that the chiefs and the tribes decided to leave behind. But they could only do that by moving under the protection of the British common law system. Um, and they have entitlement claims, etc. There's a whole sad, sad story, boo-hoo-hoo, that comes with all this. Whereas all the other folk who are of Maori descent and mixed uh, bloodline and Kiwis happy people are over here living in this um, idea that we can make a, a really good nation together. And meanwhile, we've got all these spoil sports running around. So I thought I'd just make this little distinction to show that social and democratic demographic change has um, created an opportunity for the cultural Marxist or the conflict ideology to penetrate our innocent country and under the name of um, tangata whenua and mana whenua uh, and uh, we are the true Maoris uh, these guys are creating this tremendous upset however they aren't 100% Maori and I believe that the early the chiefs and tribes from 1840 if they saw the behaviour of this lot and were here they'd box their ears kick them up the backside tell them to go and get a good day's work get on with everybody stop this nonsense and build the nation up and create a spirit of unity and harmony together and stop being such racist hypocrites because, oh, I've got to throw that word in there because the word hypocrite fits this kind of character. Hypocrite. They are sad sack, miserable characters who have forgotten that the purpose of us forming our nation was to create a better state for all of us, a better state of being, I don't mean a state as in a Marxist state, a better state of living, a better level of, of life and elevate us all together. And that is a big job. So I, I rest this one here. You can catch the overview and how we have changed and how we have moved forward as a people. And now we're all the people of New Zealand, which was integral with the treaty. And it's time for our commercial. So briefly, we're going to introduce to you the uh, book, The Fraud, Plunder, Treason and Our Treaty, 
which tackles these topics is written by Christopher Newman, someone I know quite well, Newman Press, available online at newmanpress.com and within it are many of the ideas and insights that you've just captured in this uh, video today, but which are expressed in a lot more detail and it's all fact-based, it's based on uh, understanding of putting things in their context. And the context is really important. Oh, I'm going to write context next to this, this word here because this context is um, the context of change. You can see how the original people who were here in the beginning, through combining with the incoming groups, uh, created a whole new, the context of a whole new nation. Thank you for listening to me and I hope this has given you lots of stimulating ideas and insights that will help you in your discussions with your friends on the matter of social and democratic change and all the people of New Zealand.